Tad es gribu jums stādīt priekšā cilvēku, kas ir uzaltis Ukrainā, bet savas saknes atradas Latvijā. Man šobrīd viņa arī šeit dzīvo, bet viņa ir tās turniece, Kijevā ir iegupas savu izglītību. Šodien viņa jums pastāstīs kādu ļoti interesantu stāstu par sen ilīriešu kultūru. Man liekas, ka Sofija tāds cilvēks, kuram interesē ļoti daudz lietas, viņi ļoti dzirdi tiešām pēta dažādas kultūras, bet nu šodien tā tad būs sen ilīrieši. Es domāju, ka arī būs interesanti. Tā, Sofija stāstīs angliski un pagaidām es, bet tulks tulkos latviski. Pagaidām. Labdien! Man lielas prieks šodien būt šeit. Nē, kur man angliski? Es tulkos latviski, es angliski nevaru. Nē, es latviski, tā tas lietas gan labi latviski pateikt. Šodien es stāstīšu par seni liešu kultūru, angļu valodu. It must be said that Illyrian culture isn't very well known in the world, and there are some reasons for it. Ir ir jāsaka, kad Illyriešu kultūra pasaulē nav plaši un labi zināma un ir daži iemesli tam. The main reason is that the historical sources about culture and about ancient religion is a very small number of them, and those that are available actually are not translated in any language, even in English. Nu, gudīgi sakotam, iemesls ir tas, ka viss vēstur savots un liecības ir ļoti nelielā skaitā un ļoti grūti pieejams. One of the most important things that we must know, speaking about Lyrian culture, that the information about the ancient religion, I mean religion that was before the Christianity appeared there, Un svarīga lieta, par ko būtu jārunā runāja par ilīriešu kultūru, ir reliģija, kas ir viņa senā reliģija, tātad reliģija pirms kristietības ienākšanas. During many centuries it was absolutely not known, especially after the 15th century when it was war with the Ottoman Empire. It destroyed the culture, also it was nearly impossible to keep it. Un iemesls, kāpēc tā ir tik slikti saglabājusies, ir, jo no 15. vai līdz 15. No 15. gadsimta tātad šo kultūru ietekmē Otto, kā viņi latviski tūkojas? Turku impērija. Turku impērija, jā, kas iznīcināja daudz liecības par šo reģiju. Anita? Anita? Uh, so we continue uh, speaking about Illyrian culture and uh, I will tell you about the historical sources that tell us some information about ancient religion. What was it like? Tātad viņa stāstīs par šo seno reliģiju, kas bija līriešiem. Jā, tā es saprotu. Jā, es saprotu. Viņa turpinās stāstīt par to, bet tu gribi ar mani vai stūkot? Viņa gribi ar mani vai stūkot? Nu, labi. Uh, so, in the 19th century, uh, the information of the Iran culture was known already in Europe, firstly in Germany and France. It was because uh, some people who were really interested in it went uh, to these countries and uh, they tried to find out books about this information. Daži ieinteresēti cilvēki devās uz šīm zemēm un meklē grāmatas par šo kultūru. One of the most known books that was published in France in the 19th century called The Songs of Illyrians. It was different tales, different legends that told about historical events. Also, we can get some information about the religion from that. 
no, viens no grāmatām, kas tik publicētas, bija uh, grāmatas, kurās bija stāsti un leģendas par ilīriešu kultūru. Un... Uh, so, uh, when this book was published, it was a great interest to this. Many people read it and uh, what was uh, really very important that it was actually some very important information about this religion, religion that was before the Christianity appeared. Due to it, we uh, find out uh, information about some rituals. And it must be said that rituals were quite similar to other Indo-European traditions. Tātad šīs grāmatas tika, tās bija pirmās publicētās grāmatas, un viņas izraisīja ļoti lielu interesi, jo viņās bija apraksti par seno reliģiju un arī par seniem rituāliem, kas bija visai līdzīgi ar citiem sen indoeiropiešu rituāliem. Atšķirīgi, tradīcijā. atšķirīgi. Similar. Similar līdzīgi. Uh, so, uh, I will tell you one example that shows uh, the information about rituals. Uh, one of the stories from this book tells uh, about uh, uh, one uh, person who wanted to keep the ancient religion. It was really very difficult, especially because of the political situation, but he managed to do this. Un tad es gribu pastāstīt par to, kādas ir šīs līdzības. Un pirmām kārtām es stāstīšu, uh, stāsts bija par cilvēku, kas vēlējās saglabāt šīs senās tradīcijas. So, uh, there was not a great number of people who were really interested in this. If uh, one person actually understood this importance and he uh, tried uh, to persuade others that it is really important, no, no one uh, wanted to do like this. But, uh, but some people, of course, also understood this importance. And it was very good. Nebija daudz cilvēku saprata, cik liela tam ir nozīme. Un, bet bija tomēr daži cilvēki, kas saprata, cik svarīgi būtu saglabāt un izprast šo kultūru. He even managed to do different uh, rituals. Uh, firstly, it was uh, very important to remember about ancestors. Uh, the same as for Slavonic and Baltic people, rituals were devoted to the ancestors. Tas nebija vienkārši izdarāms, tomēr viņš uh, centās atjaunot šos senos rituāls. Un pirmkārt, viņš um, atminējās senčus un senču kultu. Tas līdzīgi arī pa citām slāvu un baltu tautām saistība ar senčiem. Uh, so this uh, first uh, book tells uh, about this very difficult attempt. Because uh, firstly just some people wanted to do the same, others uh, didn't understand this importance and thought that it's good that ancient culture doesn't exist. They thought it was not needed. Uh, jā, daļa cilvēku uzskatīja, uh, kad um, ka tas ir ļoti noderīgi, bet bija cilvēki, kas uzskatīja, ka nav nepieciešams atjaunot šo kultūru un kad nav nepieciešams, ka viņa vispār eksistē. Uh, so, uh, what was the result of this uh, very difficult process? The result was uh, very successful, because uh, he not just wanted to make their constructions of the rituals, uh, but he wanted uh, to teach people how to keep this culture, how to do this uh, very successfully. Kāds bija rezultāts visam šim procesam? Viņš parādīja ne tikai atjaunot šos rituāls, bet parādīja arī cilvēkiem, kā kopt šo kultūru un kā darīt to veiksmīgi. To do it successfully was the first task that must be done. And uh, after uh, all this very difficult process that ended after the 200 years, so during all this, Time many people who really were eager to do this, they actually saved this ancient culture of this ancient heritage. Un tā viss šī saglabāšana uh, ilga aptuveni 200 gadus bija šis process, bet kas tiešām noslēdzās veiksmīgi, jo tā kultūra tika saglabāta. In the 20th century there was a very difficult political situation in uh, Balkan, uh, Balkanic countries because of different wars and political destabilizations. Actually, uh, the history also uh, was uh, nearly the same, like in the 15th century, very similar things were at this period. So all these books and information is very important also in this difficult period. 20. gadsimtā bija ļoti grūts laiks, kad bija gan politiski, gan ekonomiski, gan citi satricinājumi līdzīgi kā 15. gadsimtā. Un, protams, ka arī vēsturu un vēsturu spētniecību piedzīvoja tādas pašas problēmas. It must be said about one more very important book, 
that uh, was also about this process, how to keep the national culture and why is it important. It was firstly published after the uh, Second World War. Unfortunately, the number of these books was very small and they were known only in uh, former Yugoslavia. In other countries it wasn't uh, available at all. Un tika publicēta vēl viena būtiska grāmata, um, ka daudz man tā teksta varbūt te nākamreiz visā, um, par to, kā saglabāt savu kultūru, viņa tika publicēta pēc otrā pasaules karma. Um, jā. Bet uh, tā kā Dienvidslāvijā, laikam, tur bija sarežģīta situācija, tad arī tā grāmata, laikam, mm. <laughs> I meant that uh, not many people could read it. <laughs> the title of the book was uh, The History of National Struggle. It was the strategy, the cultural strategy, how to keep uh, the national, national culture and national values from uh, all the enemies that could destroy this. Grāmata bija par to, kā noturēt savu kultūru, kā noturēt to stipru. Nacionālo kultūru. Nacionālo kultūru. Un tās vērtības. Uh, when I got information about this book, it was 10 years ago, I understood that I really must read it and analyze, because it's a very important source for ancient Illyrian culture. Kad es atradu šo grāmatu, es sapratu, ka man noteikti ar to ir jāiepazīstās un jāaizas, jo tas ir ļoti... Mm, Nopietnis un interesants vēsturs avots par ilīriešu kultūru. Šo avotu pat... Oj, es jau... So, uh, this source was analyzed by me, and also it must be said that I don't know any similar book that would give us so much information about ancient Illyrians about uh, the ancient religion that was before Christianity, also about the importance of this. Šo grāmatu es izstudēju, un es varu pateikt, ka ne, tas ir ļoti labs avots, kur gūt plašu ieskatu sen ilieriešu kultūrā un reliģiskajos priekštatos. Uh, in uh, our time, many people have a great interest to this. This ancient heritage is really very good. I even know that uh, among young people it is very popular to read such books, uh, try to discover what was the beginning of culture, what was before Christianity appeared. Uh, so I think that uh, it must be translated into many languages, firstly in English. It's really quite difficult to do, uh, but I hope I will manage also with other people's help. Un šī ir lieta, kas šobrīd sāk ļoti interesēt jaunas cilvēkus un, un viņu vēl saprast to un izzināt. Un, un, un Sofija uzskata, ka tas būtu arī jātulko citās valodās, lai tas varētu plašāk izskatīties. A kā sauc to grāmatu? Es tas teicu. It was a history of national struggle. Tātad grāmatas nosaukums ir nacionālā spēka vai cīņas. Struggle. So, I think that uh, it's very important to find out such information about ancient times because uh, it influenced uh, all the culture, culture, religion and philosophy. And that's why I think that uh, such books must be translated, published and will be a great contribution to the exploration of ethnic religions. And so I think that when these grammars are written and studied, it will be a philosophy and a master of the Uh, so now uh, I want to ask you, maybe you have some questions to ask about uh, things I have told. Vai ir varbūt kādam kādi jautājumi? Kādā valstī jūs lokalizējiet tagad pilvīdieši? Uh, uh, Latviski ar bildēt vēl? Un no, viņš no. vantrī šī localize uh, this culture. Jūs this culture uh, is in Albania, in Macedonia, in Serbia. Tāpēc Albānija, Macedonija, Serbija. Un Itālija? Jā, no. Here, the Yes, there are. It's a diaspora. Yeah, yeah. Italy. Where are these books available from? Uh, 
Uh, and this uh, uh, book it's possible uh, to buy in Albania, for example, in university. It is very popular, students read this, but uh, unfortunately the number of books is very small. You may ask some uh, historian to give it to borrow for you, if, if you want to read this. Tad grāmatas var iegādāties Albānijā, bet tiem žēl eksemplāri skaits ir ļoti mazs, ļoti neliels, un līdz ar to var vienīgi kādam vēsturniekam palūgt, lai viņš aizdod šīs grāmatas. Es gribēju Sofijai vai tevi ir kaut kāds stāsts par kalendāru, viņa kultūrā arī ir stāsts? Tur ir, tur ir tieši par kalendāru. Un tu kaut ko vēl par to pateikt par kalendāru? Jā, protams. Pasakiet. Tā kā enciklopēdija mēs tev atvērām tagad. So, I have also words about ancient calendar. Tātad Sofija teiks pāris vārdus par seno ilīriešu kalendāru. This calendar is very similar to Beltic and Slavonic, the same rituals. I also told about these rituals for ancestors. Jā, tātad kalendārs ir ļoti līdzīgs seno slāvu un seno baltu kalendāriem, un viņam iepriekš minēja tātad par šo senču godināšanas rituāliem. I am also going to make the reconstruction of this calendar. I know from this book only about rituals, about the ancestors, but also there were many others during all the year were special rituals for each season of year. Sofie, vēlētos rekonstruēt šo kalendāru. Šobrīd viņa ir ieguvusi ziņas tieši par šo senču kultu, bet tur ir ļoti daudz dažādi rituāli un svētki visu gadu garumā. I think that information is possible to find, because this book must be analyzed, very specific. A great number of information you can get from it, reading very attentively and translating. Jā, Sofija uzskata, ka šo grāmatu ar šo grāmatu būtu jāiepazīstās, viņa būtu jāizprota, no viņas varbūt daudz ko būtu. Un kādā valodā tā grāmata ir sarkstīta? Tā grāmata ir uzrakstīta Albāņu valodā. Tā grāmata ir... It was it was not in Albanian language. Vai jūs arī avotu spēju, tad piemēram nakolīgas izspēju, kur ir rakstu zīmes un tā tālāk, vai avotas jūs spēju, vai tikā literatūru tekstus? Es pētīju arī citus avotus. So, I was exploring different other books about archaeology. Yes, also it can give us a lot of information. But, My aim, my great aim was to discover information really about rituals. Actually, only in this book I find out this information. In others, I haven't seen this. Sofija izmanto vairākas avotas, no kuriem var būt informācija arī arheoloģiskos, bet tā kā viņas mērķis bija izprast senos rituāls, tad tieši šajā grāmatā viņa atrada šo informāciju. Can I ask you uh, how is the connection with uh, the thing, Illyricks and Slavic people? There is some connection, I think, cultural. Yes, uh, there was much different influences, also from Slavonic people. Mm -hmm. But this influence wasn't very great. Mm -hmm. The reasons was that uh, Albanians uh, don't like Slavonic people. They don't want to show this culture to the same Serbians and Macedonians. Mm -hmm. They want to keep it uh, very, very concealed for themselves. Bija jautājums par to, vai ilīriešu kultūrai ir arī kāda saistība ar, vai kaut kāda ietnu līdzība ar slāvu kultūru. Un Sofija atzina, ka ir, bet viņi paši to neuzskata pa vēlām sev, un viņi tomēr grib būt atsevišķi. It must be told also that it is very important for them to keep this culture from others. It can be a very interesting question whether it is good or it is not very good that they don't want to show it to other cultures, to the same Macedonians. Uh, but uh, also maybe the reason is language, because Slavonic people don't want to learn the Iberian, the Albanian language, that's why they don't have any communication between them. Tātad doma ir tāda, kad viņi vēlas palikt atšķirti, jā, un tomēr viņi vēlas palikt, lai atcīnotot paši, un viens no galvenajiem iemesliem varētu būt valodas barīgi, jo nav iespējams komunicēt savā starpā. Do you think that this kind of book, the information there can help, for example, in the general option, to buy the picture, to see some, you know, rituals, it can be, like, Similar, similarity really, really I have seen. 
very similar to the same Slavonic. Of course, it can be told that they didn't have any influence. It's impossible because Slavonic people live not far away from them in the same Macedonia. Yes, so it was influence. Maybe not so great, uh, but it was. Tātad bija jautājums par to, vai tajos rituālos var manīt šo slavu kultūras ietekmi. Un Sofija saka, ka, protams, tā ietekme ir, jo vienmēr kā savstarpējās kultūras apmaiņas un ietekmes, un arī ļoti tuvu, tomēr arī slāva reģionu atrodas ilīriešiem, tā pati Maķedonī. Tā, kad varbūt viņi paši par to, tā kā to paši neatbalsta vai nepriecājās, bet ietekmes ir. Also in language is really very seen this influence. Arī balodā ir ietekmi.